Hello and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Leah Rosen, online editor for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for our speaker in the chat window on your screen. After the presentation, we will begin the question and answer portion, and I will ask our speaker your questions from the chat window. Your questions in the chat window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. So thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Kevin Lannon from Flow Design Sonics. Thank you everybody for joining this morning. Uh, today I'd like to talk a bit about acoustic cell processing and specifically around applications within the cell and gene therapy manufacturing workflows. Uh, just before we begin, a little bit of background on Flow Design Sonics. Uh, Flow Design Sonics was a company founded back in 2010 looking at a variety of applications for uh, acoustics and focused uh, really on the life sciences in 2013. We are about a 45-person company based in Western Massachusetts, We're about an hour outside of Boston, with a majority of our staff based primarily on the, uh, the sciences and engineering focuses looking at new application development and product development. Looking at a kind of a generic cell therapy manufacturing process, we identified that there were quite a few steps which required uh, washing or concentration or a buffer exchange step um, for a cell therapy manufacturing process. And these steps were primarily based on three main technologies, centrifugation, filtration, and counterflow centrifugation. Each of these technologies has inherent issues associated with them. Uh, for instance, centrifugation, uh, centrifuges, I'm sorry, are generally uh, rather manual and have open processing, and the process of forming the pellet and then resuspending it can introduce uh, additional shear for the cells in that process. Uh, filtration systems generally can have issues with clogging and fouling, um, and the mature counterflow centrifugation systems on the market today uh, are generally built a bit more for larger volume uh, process fluids, so not really um, going to address the needs of the autologous cell therapy market. So the current state of technologies as far as we see in it is the legacy technologies themselves or a pairing of the le legacy technologies with a layer of automation implemented on top. And the result here is that we aren't seeing big leaps and improvements only incremental improvements due to the fact that those inherent issues we just discussed are still present within these now automated systems. So we really weren't seeing a lot of innovation on that front. So what we found was that there was a need to really build a system fit for purpose. And this new technology should address the technology shortcomings that we, we just reviewed, but also maintain or improve the quality of the products being process through those systems, and simplify a closed and automated manufacturing process for cell and gene therapies, allowing us to get to commercialization that much faster. So before we get into the actual product itself, I would like to introduce a bit more about acoustic cell processing and the underlying physics behind it, acoustophoresis. On these figures you'll see here, we have uh, shown essentially the process of what the acoustics are going to be doing to the cells during the processing, and I'd like to walk you through those now. In figure one, you'll see a forward propagating wave being uh, propelled by the transducer. This then hits a reflector in figure two and bounces back where we form a standing wave. And during the standing wave, uh, we tune that within the system to hit resonance to ensure that we do indeed have a standing wave. And in figure three, we actually see the cells enter the flow path, and as the fluid flow drives those cells, in this case, uh, vertically upwards in this figure, these cells will then be captured within the acoustics. And as those cells are captured in the acoustics in figure four, you see the acoustic radiation force pushes these cells toward these low energy nodes within the acoustic field itself. And as more and more cells flow through this path, we will see the cells form these loose clusters at the nodes, 
And once those nodes hit a specific radius, they will actually overcome the fluid flow force, in this case, again, vertically upward, and settle down due to gravity to be captured within our collector. This can happen multiple times within the process, or cells can stay happily within the acoustic field itself. This depends on the cell size and fluid flow rate selected to tune for that particular process. Here's another look at uh, acoustophoresis in action. In this case, we're looking at our actual chamber design uh, that we've used on our ECHO platform. Um, walk you through this very briefly uh, in these three main steps. So on the, most, the leftmost panel, you'll see the cell solution coming in uh, through the feed inlet. Uh, this is then directed through the acoustic field and out to the waste outlet. The spent media will be out the waste outlet while the cells themselves are captured within the acoustic field and drawn into these clusters like we saw on the previous slide. <clears throat> Again, as those clusters reach a certain radius, they will start to settle out, as you can see at the bottom, and be collected in the... Uh, once the cell input has been processed, we will turn off the pumps and then turn off the acoustics, drain the supernatant from the top, and then allow the uh, drain port at the bottom to open to collect our concentrated cell slurry during the recovery phase. This led us uh, to launch our product uh, at Facilitate in Miami in 2019. Um, and what we see here is the ECHO platform, which is a GMP-compatible acoustic cell processing platform, which initially will be focused primarily on um, concentration, washing, and buffer exchange operations. There are three primary components of this system. Um, looking at the top, right behind the touchscreen, is going to be our system control unit, or SCU. This uh, houses the acoustic drivers, which produce the acoustic waves that we use. Uh, the touchscreen is going to be our graphical user interface, and this allows an operator to uh, run the system in a manufacturing mode or in an offline mode where you actually have a development package that allows you to tune and customize protocols. The bottom half of the unit is the fluid handling unit, or FHU. Uh, this houses the pumps, valves, and bubble sensors required for system operation and also houses the actual acoustic transducer itself and an integrated cooling loop to maintain temperature control uh, while the acoustics are turned on. Thirdly, and very importantly, will be our single-use cartridge. This is a fully single-use disposable that will be uh, installed onto the system for each process run. All of the connections to the input and output materials uh, are done via sterile tube weld whether that's PVC or C-Flex, there are options for both. And the way this cartridge is set up is set to avoid any kind of complex uh, tubing assemblies that are common on other platforms. This cartridge will just slip right onto the front of the system and then be locked into place. So there's basically an error-free setup. The system will not lock that cartridge in unless it is installed correctly. The user interface is extremely intuitive um, and driven via a touchscreen. There are step-by-step -step pictographs that uh, describe to an operator each individual step as needed for installing the cartridge and running the process. Uh, once the process is begun, it is essentially a single button start, and it is a walk-away operation. There is no user or operator intervention required during cell processing. There are a number of pre-programmed protocols based on cell volume, cell concentration, and cell type. We also uh, have the software open on a development package, which is an offline package, which allows for customization of these protocols. And um, our application support will be there to help uh, with that, or a customer can do that on their own. The software is 21 CFR Part 11 compliant so allowing for quick implementation into a GMP process. Um, all that paperwork will, will be on hand, as well as the ability to export an electronic back record in a number of different options. There, here we go. So looking at a couple of the different applications that we've looked at recently and different cell types. 
So one of the areas where we've seen a lot of interest has been around uh, single cell suspensions. So we looked at a variety of cell types that are very common in the cell therapy space. For instance, T cells, PSCs, and MSCs. Looking at the chart on the right, we'll see that uh, for each of these uh, experiments, there were specific primary goals and secondary goals. I'd like to, can't have time to go through all of the data, but I'd like to focus quickly on the T cell data. So we find that's very interesting for a lot of folks uh, with an input volume of about one liter. The target uh, for this experiment was to maximize recovery in as short as possible process time was being the secondary goal. We were able to achieve a 96% recovery of the viable cells within that initial starting solution, and that processing time was kept to about 68 minutes. And so the end user there was very happy with those results compared to what their existing platform was. You can see similar results for the PSCs and MSCs looking at the specific goals for each of those on this graph, on this chart. One thing that we do like to point out, which is very interesting, was a, an aggregate, cell aggregate manipulation that we recently ran where the target here was to increase the ratio of aggregates to single cells. Uh, this customer preferred to deplete the single cells. And so what we were able to do is tune the acoustics to hold the aggregates within the acoustic field and allow single cells to pass through to waste. With only two passes through our system, we were able to achieve over 98% of the cell solution uh, in aggregates as opposed to only 2% uh, left of the single cells. So in conclusion, we've tested a wide variety of cell types, T cells, MSCs, fibroblasts, and others in single cell suspension. Uh, the cell aggregate work on HPSCs and other cell aggregates that we've worked with has been really exciting for a number of folks. And uh, an application that we've also been developing and have gotten some very successful results with is processing of apheresis product, so washing in or washing out of cryoprotectant uh, for freezing or thawing operations. New applications that are also under the umbrella of concentration and wash would be uh, obviously uh, the harvest of uh, post-expansion and washing, concentrating that product, but also even further upstream, for instance, electroporation preparation, uh, cryoprotectant addition and removal, or single cell removal, or even just a simple buffer exchange while maintaining the cells at a very high quality due to the acoustics not impacting the cells. So, and to wrap this up, the, what, we've, excuse me, what we've designed is a built-for-purpose platform which addresses uh, the shortcomings of the current technologies for these unit operations while also simplifying, closing, and automating the self-therapy manufacturing process. I would like to extend a special thank you to the team at CCRM, specifically Liz, Stee, and Steven, uh, for helping us with the generation of the PSC and MSC data. Thank you guys, it was very appreciated. And with that, I would like to wrap up, and please feel free to reach out with me, reach out to me, I'm sorry. Uh, my email is listed here or through our website at www.fdsonics.com. Great, thanks Kevin. So the first question is, can the ECHO be used for bioreactor cell retention or are you developing a system that can be used for bioreactor cell retention? Yeah, thank you, that's actually a, a great question. Um, so as you saw in the picture uh, of the ECHO platform itself, we generally will be using transfer bags for some of these processes. That being said, we have had multiple customers um, already look at hooking the system directly into a bioreactor so we can do a sterile weld directly onto a harvest port or drain port of a bioreactor. And uh, actually that, uh, some of the data we've shown today was actually done with the setup hooking directly into a bioreactor. So yes, we can do both. And how is the chamber cooled? The chamber is cooled via an internal cooling loop, um, which circulates a cooling fluid around the acoustic transducer, uh, which is the primary uh, source of heat that will be generated in the system. So we maintain that at about 37 degrees Celsius throughout the process. 
And what are the limits on feed flow rate and total volumetric throughput? That's a great question. Um, so the total volumetric throughput is dependent purely on the pump, which if I remember correctly, I believe is three liters an hour, but I do want to be careful with that um, because actual processing throughput varies primarily based on cell size and cell compressibility as compared to the media that it's in. So that total volumetric throughput is a physical limit as opposed to a processing limit, which will be dependent on cell type and volume. And what is the total volume that you can process? So again, depending on cell size and volume, what we've done is basically looked at larger volumes will generally take longer times to process. So as far as the system is concerned, there's no true maximum limit of volume. It's purely how long will the cells be happy to be processed. So for instance, if you're using a transfer bag as opposed to hooking onto a bioreactor like we discussed previously, those cells would need to be happy in a transfer bag for as long as, as needed. So, but as a rule of thumb, we can generally process one to two liters of a single cell suspension in about one hour to one and a half hours. So 60 to 90 minutes is generally a rule of thumb for single cell suspension. But if those cells are sitting in a controlled uh, bioreactor, those cells can be happy for quite a bit longer so we can take you know, hours to process larger volumes if required. Does the system differentiate which cells are collected or all types dropped out of the media? So the actual acoustics can be tuned to grab cells of a specific acoustic response. Generally, that will be based primarily on size. So for instance, uh, the aggregate data was able to grab the aggregates selectively and allow these smaller single cells to pass through. Um, and again, tuning the acoustic power, we are able to control the amount of time that the cells and those cell clusters will sit within the acoustics until they drop out. So that just takes a little bit of tuning of the acoustics themselves. Have you tried isolating PBMCs from whole blood? So we have processed apheresis product um, and, and grabbed uh, the PBMCs and washed out the cryoprotectant uh, from frozen or again the washed in to then freeze a uh, PBMC products. And those recoveries are part of a co-development with, uh, with a partner that we have gotten approval to share, but not just, <laughs> we just got approval a couple days ago, so I don't have the data on hand. But yes, we have, we have processed PBMCs. Okay. So go ahead and keep typing your questions in. I, we are going to get to our last question. If we didn't answer your question, Kevin, we'll get your question directly and can follow up with you individually. So the last question for the webcast today is, can we add a freezing solution post-washing? Yes, so we have uh, done a number of different studies for mixing in cryoprotectant following a washing and concentration step, and that is absolutely something the system is capable of handling. Okay, well, thank you so much, Kevin. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you to our audience for joining us. The recorded version of this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing on our website, and as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email with a direct link. We look forward to having you join us at future Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcasts. Look for those announcements in your inbox. Goodbye.